everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from the Automator. And uh, today we're doing a little demo with VS Code, a little tool we're selling. And we're selling it for a couple of reasons. One is we're taking a lot of time to help people configure. VS Code's an amazing editor, right? And it's, it's especially right now for V1 and V2, it is quote unquote, the editor that handles it all. But um, configuring it is kind of a pain. And so we have built a tool that allows you to streamline it and simplify it. And not only that, but we're peeking inside his ace's brain, as scary as that might be, and see a lot of his other extensions that he has. I said, put together a package of all the cool tools you use. And also, by the way, if you purchase this, when when he adds a new one, we'll email you and tell you, like, by the way, here's, you know, there's a new extension or something. That is right. Now, here's the thing that the, the configuring tool does two parts. First, it installs the uh, the extensions, and we're gonna. I'm gonna tell you more or less what they do. But more importantly, it also installs some default settings that I use. So these settings are actually done there. They, they're created for you, so you don't have to worry about them. Like for example, this green line and this yellow line. Um, there's a third one. There's a, a red line out there that kind of like allows me to keep track how long I'm typing my lines. Yeah, that is in the configuration file. Not many people know how to do that. So even though I can tell you about each of this, the extensions, yeah, you will have to do some configuring and I'm just making you, I'm saving you time. With the well, tool. let me rephrase that. If you don't buy our tool, here's the list of extensions we're going to cover, but it right. wouldn't have it all configured. And that's another uh, Yeah, thing. and you would have to spend some time on that too. So now uh, again, HK++ is for V1. For now, the V1 Lexer that I use, that's the best one that I have available. And the second one is the V2 language support by THQ by. And the, the these, guy that doesn't sleep. <laughs> this guy doesn't sleep, that's for sure. <laughs> no, so in any case, uh, he, uh, for now, he is having... Uh, yeah, three days ago, he has been, he's updating this thing all the time and it's the best extension for V2. The third one, most important one, I'm going to jump ahead on that one just because they're related, is the debugger. And this is the most important one. Yeah. If you want to be doing debugging and stuff, you need an advanced debugger. And this is the advanced <laughs> debugger. If you don't have this one, some of the things that I do on the videos and stuff are not going to work out because you yeah, need to I know because we've walked through this a couple times with clients. It needs to be configured in a very specific way. And that's what yes, you know, that's really uh, problematic for a lot of people. So yeah. now this one here, I usually use it when I'm looking at some uh, log files, if I'm creating a log. And while the log is being written, uh, VS Code does not scroll for you. This just does that. It just automatically scrolls the, the log file. That's it. The ones that have to do with repositories like this, those are advanced and not everybody's going to use them. But if you're using Git, you will need them. This one is amazingly good if you can select a few files in VS Code and rename them at the same time in the editor. And then it would rename all your files for you. So it is a, an advanced renamer tool, technically, inside VS Code, which is great. Uh, we have been talking about Code GPT a lot. This one allows you to have Code GPT right inside VS Code. You can do your query here and right there, copy your code and try it there. This one is a very small one. It just, wherever you have anything that looks like hexadecimal or colors like uh, rgb colors it would place the color in it and it has a few features like uh, the background the foreground or just highlight around it so it's good this one i cannot leave without it allows you to align code based on whatever selection you have so if you want if your things are if you are kind of like ocd like me you can go ahead and align code by hitting a hotkey you just select what you want to align um, with multiple cursors and then just align them exactly how you want to do it so this extension i had after using it outside of this vs code i find myself <laughs> wanting to have this uh git graphics uh this is great for just, taking no. right this is great for keeping track of a vs code repository uh, the uh, git repository if you use it um again github repositories and requests those are extensions if you're using git very often that i cannot live without them especially git lens this is a thing that holy crap this is a great extension for git now i 
always have a hex editor. Whenever I have an editor, I use a hex editor. The weirdest times I find myself needing one of them. So I always have one in there. This one is interesting because while you're indenting stuff, yeah, while you're indenting stuff, you might lose track on which level you're at. And this adds a little bit of coloring. It's a little bit soft. You cannot probably see it that much, but it adds some coloring to the indentation that lets you know in which level you're at at all times. This is amazingly good as well. Again, multi-cursor, you select multiple lines, and just by hitting a hotkey, you can create an, a numbered list. Now, you can control the stepping if you want to go one by one, two by two, and where you're going to start, you start at zero or you start at one. You, you have a little bit of control on that. And it's That's the stuff that you, like Maestri has added to studio as well. It's just, it, it yeah, just those little it's nuances. It's really like, necessary, you know, right? It is really necessary. You can control if it is double digits, how many digits you want to add. If it is, you know, D2, that means you have to append a zero if it is two digits. Great, great extension. Uh, this is just for uh, supporting certain type of JSON files. Markdown, if you're doing markdown, this gives you a lot of capabilities. VS Code by default allows you, has a, mark, a markdown previewer, but this also allows you to do additional stuff with keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. So awesome. The material icon theme is great for, by default, VS Code does not show you folder or icons here, many icons, just shows you some of them. This material theme, once you enable it, if you just activate the icon, now your folders have colors and it's easier to keep track of a lot of things because the color coding makes it great, okay? The rainbow CSV, amazing. I couldn't well, live without have, this one. No, this is, this. this is amazing. If you have a CSV yeah. file, it each column, each one, makes it a different color so that you know that this number belongs to the second color, right? So it's yeah. really good, but it also allows you to align the uh, CSV file to be, you know, uh -huh. by column. So it allows nice. you to do that. Remote repositories, a lot of times I see the code from somebody else. So I connect to their code in GitHub without having to download it. And I can see the their repositories without having yeah. to download it. That's great. This just if you select a few lines of uh, a few lines at the bottom, it tells you how many lines you have selected. I don't know why this is not something basic in VS Code, but yeah, I need ex an extension for that. Uh, the swap diff difference we, we did a video about on that. one a video, right? There's uh, a, a couple actually. Yeah, if you're comparing between two files, uh, this is a very great thing because Huge. VS Code just orders them in a specific way. But if you want to flip them around, you can just use this extension. And the last one is some XML tools that allow you to deal with XML files, formatting, you know, evaluation, linting, and stuff like that. So it's amazingly good. Those are the, those are the different uh, extensions that I have. Most of them require some sort of configuration, which my settings file uh, deals with a few of them, not all, because I cannot assume how you want it configured, but there's a few things that I assume that are going to be needed in a lot of them. So there you go. That's what this tool is all about. Now, in the end, uh, it, once you install the tool, you also get a 20% discount on the course that we have for transitioning from V1 to V2, which basically this tool is for people mainly that are doing that. If you're trying to switch to VS Code, it's because you're trying VS V2, even though we really recommend other editors if you're not actually a programmer. But in any case, if you are actually anyways switching, then I really recommend you going through this uh, course and we're giving you a 20% discount for getting this particular tool. Yeah, so uh, like I said, you're feel free to just look at this list and manually do them yourselves. But again, it doesn't, when you do that, you don't get the configuration of setting it up properly and stuff. So our tool will you go through. You don't get the discount. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and also though, like actually when we go through it, you will you can select and deselect which extensions you want. So it's it's yeah, not yeah, a blanket, yeah. everything gets installed. It's very no. easy to, to customize the stuff. So we, he made a That's nice right. installation tool. So um, check it out. Thank you. Cheers.